grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are welcome to worship together here in person and if you're joining us online. You're welcome with the church at Cars Lane because we are all welcomed by our generous hearted God. We're welcome just as we are. Just how you're feeling today, it's a bit rainy. If the weather's got you down, you're welcome just like that. And if you've still got some sunshine in your heart, you're welcome like that too. You're welcome in your sexuality, with your gender identity, the mood you're in, with your mental health, with your neurodiversity, your finances, just who you are. You are loved and accepted by God, just as you are, because it is God who welcomes us. Our first hymn affirms that God is love. Today is Refugee Sunday. I'm just showing the picture. It may not come out too well online. We Cannot Walk Alone is the theme of Refugee Week this year, which is just finishing today. And today is International Refugee Day. That will be reflected a lot in the service this morning. So our affirmation of God's love is God's love for everyone. This hymn is of its time, so God is referred to as he the whole time. Feel free to play with that a bit because God, if we're all created in the image of God, God must be a bit bigger than just he. But if you're comfortable with he, sing that or sing whatever gender identity you want. The most important thing is the affirmation that God is love and that is why we worship. My 
We come now to pray. Um, when I say we praise you, please respond, we worship you. Let us pray. God of love and beauty, God for us, God with us, but God not only with us and for us, God with and for every person. We praise you, we worship you for your all-encompassing un love that sets us free, for your transforming power that changes our lives. We praise you. We worship you. Creator God, who made the earth and the beauty of the people we love, we praise you. We worship you. For coming to be among us in Jesus, to show us what love is like by how he lived, how he engaged with people, how he welcomed, how he mixed with rich and poor alike, how he did not just sympathize, but spoke up for justice and good. We praise you. We worship you. We confess that our own lives do not always reflect your love, your goodness, your equity with people. You're speaking up for justice. We ask for your forgiveness. Thank you that you offer your forgiveness. We praise you. We worship you. Thank you, God, for your spirit to help us in our weakness and in our troubles, to comfort us in our pains, to infuse our lives with your joy and peace. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the people who show us what your love is like. Those people we see, those far away, and those who have died. We praise you. We worship you. We bring our worship to you, and we set aside this time to worship you. We bring our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. I'm going to share just a little bit about Refugee Week. I know many of you who are Carzelinas already know quite a lot, but I thought it would be good, especially as we're sharing with people online, just to recap really what Refugee Week is. So I've taken this from the Refugee Week website. So if any of this is difficult to come across or you want to read some more, um, just you to put in Refugee Week on the internet, if you've got the internet, um, then you'll find lots more. Refugee Week is a UK-wide festival celebrating the contributions, creativity and resilience of refugees and people seeking sanctuary. It was founded in 1998 and has been held every year around World Refugee Day, which is the 20th of June. Refugee Week is a growing global movement. Through a programme of arts, culture, sports and educational events alongside media and creative campaigns, Refugee Week enables people from different backgrounds to connect beyond labels as well as encouraging understanding of why people are displaced and the challenges they face when seeking safety. Refugee Week is a platform for people who have sought safety in the UK to share their experiences, perspectives and creative work on their own terms. 
Refugee Week's vision is for refugees and asylum seekers to be able to live safely within inclusive and resilient communities where they can continue to make a valuable contribution. Refugee Week is an umbrella festival and anyone can get involved by joining or holding an event. This afternoon we're holding an event and I have it on good authority, I'm just praying and hoping, that the sun is going to come out around 12.30 and the walk this afternoon with our refugee guests is going to be wonderful. Do we agree? Yes, yes. <laughs> I was singing on the way in, here comes the sun, come on, come on. <laughs> I'm hoping. The theme this year, as you might be able to see on the screen, is we cannot walk alone. This is a moment from Martin Luther King's historic speech, I Have a Dream, when he draws his attention to white people who, realising their destiny and that of their black fellow citizens, was intertwined, joined the movement for equal rights. They have come to realise that their freedom is inextricably bound to our freedom, he said. We cannot walk alone. Life is, life is tough for many of us right now and the future feels uncertain. Looking after ourselves and our families and communities takes time and energy and there's a lot to do. The challenges of the past year have exposed the deep inequalities between us, including in housing, income and access to healthcare. But the crisis has also shown how interconnected we are, that the well-being of each of us depends on the welfare, safety and hard work of others. We are all part of a shared us. We cannot walk alone. As I say, there's lots more on their website. As you know, one of our trustees and church members, Steph, um, heads up a wonderful charity called Stories of Hope and Home. Um, many of you will know if you're coming in person today that there's the possibility of buying a brand new book published of poems published by the people who are part of that project. At the end, you'll be shown very one way. So if you did want to buy one, at the end of the service, get your five pounds out so that you can just statistically pick one up, put the five pounds in. That's a little advert there. If you're listening to us online, please contact the church at Cars Lane using their website contacts and we'll let you know how to buy one of those books. As a kind of preview, and because it was really important to us today that we hear voices of refugees, I'm going to now play um, a film that Steph has kindly made of those people reading uh, one of those poems which is in the book. The sound is um, slightly, there are several people reading together and English isn't their first language. So if you hear it a little bit muffled, that's because it kind of is. And I'm just going to fiddle with the sound system because we've had just a lovely time this morning trying to sort it out, uh, which is why I'd neglected to notice that the PowerPoint magically changed the size of all the words without me knowing it was nice and big at home. So these are the fun of using technology. So I'll just give you a moment to think about that phrase, we cannot walk alone, whilst I just change the sound system slightly. Um, Ty, we're using, is it microphone three, Chris? Is that fine? Camping up all these rocks and sand and soil. But still, when the lava comes out and I rise, you can leave me in the desert with no shirt. But still, when the lava comes out and I rise, you can demonize me and look me into the darkness. But still, when the lava comes out and I rise, you can accuse me of what I haven't done. But still, when the lava comes out and I rise, can be overcoming, unfair, and unjust. I see you can put me down by your words today. But still, like a lonely song, I rise. You can fail to care about the aftermath of your actions. But still, like a screaming time, I rise. You can make me scream and write a pain. But still, when I write for whom I rise, you can point a thousand guns at me. But still, like a million graves I rise, you can trample me underfoot. 
would like put on muddy ground. But I invite you just to have a moment when we just think of the amazing resilience of those words coming from refugees who have suffered immeasurably. We cannot walk alone. I invite, um, is doing the reading this morning? Martin, I thought it was. Thank you, Martin. The Gospel reading is from Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 to 9. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there called Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there, and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. Those of you at home might find this hard to believe unless you already know me, but I went through school being called Titch. Apparently being five, four foot ten, even at secondary school, was um, uh, invited such a thing. We hope for a world that's kinder, don't we? But when I was a child, every time I heard this story, I knew exactly who I was in the story. Tax keeper aside, I know who Titch is in this story, Yeah. <laughs> He's the person who can never see what's going on, always feels left out, knows nobody likes him. Actually, that was pretty much me at secondary school as well. I, was quite, I got on at primary school okay, but I think we see ourselves in different bits in the story. And I was fascinated, I don't know if you were able to join in the service on the week after Easter when we looked at the queering of the story of Doubting Thomas as he gets known, or as I prefer to call him, Honest Thomas, who actually said what he needed to say. 
Jesus blurs lots of boundaries between who is who in the stories. And querying the gospel is about looking to see where we are in the story. And traditionally, certain people have found it very easy to find themselves in a Bible story. Perhaps people who already feel included and immediately think, oh yes, I'd be Jesus in that story, or I'd be a disciple in that story. But these stories invite us too, and the idea of querying the Gospels invites us too, to think a little more and swap ourselves around in the story. What would it feel like instead to be Zacchaeus, who I always identified with because of his height? What would it feel like to be somebody at the back of the crowd? What would it feel like to be somebody really trying to make sure that people kept the Jewish law and the rules around all that that had been built up for centuries because you were sure that was the way to please God and you were really worried about these people going off in another direction and leaving some of these long-made rules that seem so important to you? What that feels like is worth thinking about. In Zacchaeus' story, as I say, just because of my height, I've always pictured myself, and I used to climb trees a lot when I was a kid, I always pictured myself as Zacchaeus. I deliberately try now to think, what if I was someone else in that story? What if I was one of Jesus' friends or a religious leader thinking, this rabbi's really off course, you know? He's got loads of people listening to him, and he's associating with the wrong kinds of people. Jesus blurs and changes boundaries in the language we used before. He queers those boundaries. We expect certain people to be goodies and baddies, just as the people in that day did. We expect certain people to be accepted or rejected because of their behavior or their identity. We expect certain people to be welcomed with open arms and others kept at arm's length. Jesus turned everything on its head and queers who is in and who is out. Jesus ate with people he wasn't supposed to eat with, who weren't very socially acceptable. He stood up for people who were thought of as a moral problem. He asked difficult questions like, hmm, really, you're without sin? Okay, go on, stone her then. I've always wondered how the woman caught in adultery was the only one there facing the music. Surely she didn't commit adultery by herself. Jesus stands up for her and doesn't go until they've gone and she's safe. Jesus had friends who were rich, but he would basically meet and eat with anyone. So to eat with Jesus, if you're a nice rich friend of Jesus, you had to be prepared to eat with people who were not considered quite so acceptable. Jesus touched people who were untouchable and healed people that most people didn't even notice. It's easy for us, and I mean us, I don't mean you, me too, to create a sense of we and us that feels comfortable to us and even unconsciously think who are our insiders, who are our carzelainers, perhaps. Who would I invite for a cuppa and who would I avoid? I will make a safeguarding note because we do have to be aware of keeping a community safe. But querying the gospel means we have to ask those questions. And queer in the gospel means thinking about where are you in the story and where are other people in the story? Are you an outcast being welcomed in? Are you a friend of Jesus trying to work out what on earth he's doing now? Does he annoy you and frustrate you or fascinate you? Do you want him to shape up and get on with the religious rules? Or do you want to see where this is going and be prepared to follow him even if it makes you one of the odd people too? Are you a leader wondering how Jesus can behave like this when he's supposed to be a good person? Or are you a leader thinking, yeah, I'm prepared to stand up and be one of those odd people, those mavericks, in order to be more like Jesus, which is harder to do than to say. I'm going to now read a much shorter story, which illustrates the same point, and invite you to put yourself in a different place than you normally do. This is about Jesus calling Matthew. So there are a variety of people you can be in this story. You could be Matthew, you could be someone watching, you could be Jesus, you could be a tax collector and sinner, because of course those were who Matthew's friends were. You could be a Pharisee. So as we listen, try and put yourself in a different place in your mind than you normally do. If you're used to picturing yourself in the crowd, 
take a turn as a Pharisee, perhaps, and so on. Matthew verse, chapter 9, verse 9. <clears throat> as Jesus went from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call the right, not call the righteous, but sinners. I'm going to invite you to listen to it again and to consciously put yourself in a different character in the story this time. Got one? Ready? Jesus went on from there and he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told them, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. I invite you just to sit with a moment what did it feel like being those different characters? I invite you now at the end of that story, as Jesus says, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. He looks up and looks in your eyes. What does that feel like? Is it a challenge? Is it a comfort? Does it give you strength? Can you see the love in Jesus' eyes, even among the challenge? Today is International Refugee Day, a day when we think of refugees and asylum seekers around the world, and a day when we ponder and a day when we commit to take action. Also a day when we're inviting each other to see ourselves in a different part of the story. Like the story of life, how easily world politics can change. A rich, vibrant city becomes a bombed, dangerous shell. Sadly, even using bombs manufactured in our own country to destroy homes and lives. How quickly we could find ourselves in a different place in the story. And yet still, Jesus would look up to us and look in our eyes. If you're hearing this online, I'm assuming you've got the internet, and many of you, I hope, have too. If you have time, please go on to YouTube and look up Rabbi Harry Jacobi, J-A-C-O-B-I. I'll put it in the comments on Facebook later. He uh, was the father of our very dear friend Margaret, who's the rabbi at, at Birmingham Progressive Synagogue. And he tells his own story of how he came to England on kinder transport, escaping the death camps of Nazi Germany. There are also... There's also a story, a film of him alongside a young Syrian boy, each talking about their experiences, which are so similar. You can listen to refugee stories today, read them on the Refugee Week website. Obviously, I wouldn't plug it, but buying the book that Steph has produced with people's own poetry, their stories of hope and home. And maybe to put ourselves in a different place in the story. I hope, I really hope, that none of you, none of us, really know what it's like to have to leave home and escape because our lives are in danger. But if you do know what that's like, and some of you will, our hearts are with you. 
And the theme of today is important for you to hear, for us to hear with you. We cannot walk alone. Today is an opportunity to put ourselves in the story, in the story of the gospel with a Jesus who doesn't just do what's expected and make the goodies and the baddies very clear, but queers those boundaries and invites more people to see themselves in his story. And on this refugee day, we invite you, we invite all of us, me too, to put ourselves in the stories of refugees and gain understanding even a glimpse of understanding of what life is like for those people. And as we consider these things, we see Jesus look us full in the face with eyes of love. What will you see in Jesus' face? What will refugees see in yours? They have a moment of quiet. I'm going to read some of the words of a hymn. It's 701 if you're using the book at home. It was going to come up on the screen, hopefully nice and large, as I'd put it. I invite you to join in the words in dark type, which are the second half of the verse. Heaven shall not wait for the poor to lose their patience, the scorn to smile, the despised to find a friend. Jesus is Lord. He has championed the unwanted. In him, injustice confronts its timely end. Heaven shall not wait for the dawn of great ideas, thoughts of compassion divorced from cries of pain. Jesus is Lord. He has married word and action. His cross and company make his purpose plain. Heaven shall not wait for the rich to share their fortunes, the proud to fall, the elite to tend the least. Jesus is Lord. He has shown the master's privilege to kneel and wash servants' feet before they feast. Heaven shall not wait for triumphant hallelujahs when earth has passed and we reach another shore. Jesus is Lord in our present imperfection. His love and love are enough for now and then forevermore. Amen. For our prayers of intercession today, we are going to use words from Psalm 46 as our response. When I say God is our refuge and strength, please would you respond, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Imagine, if you will, that you are sitting in a tent. This is your shelter and refuge. It isn't your home for a camping holiday. It isn't a gazebo in your back garden. This is your home for the foreseeable future, your shelter and refuge. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Let us pray. God of welcome and homecoming, we pray today for the 68.5 million people around the world who are refugees internally displaced, or asylum seekers. 
Especially we pray for people who have fled their homes from Syria, Venezuela, Afghanistan, South Sudan, and Myanmar. May they find a place of safety and security and shelter, a place where they can flourish and use their gifts, raise their families, a place they can call home. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God of welcome and homecoming. We pray for countries around the world who are hosts to refugees. Especially we pray for Turkey, Colombia, Pakistan, Uganda and Germany. And thank you for their generosity to strangers. We pray for all countries who act as hosts, that they might have the resources they need, loving hearts and continuing compassion. May they receive support from their neighbours. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God of welcome and homecoming, we pray for people who close their doors to those in trouble, who see only the label and not the person, who are afraid that their way of life might be disrupted, who harden their hearts to the alien and the stranger. We pray that their hearts might be transformed by kindness, by friendship, and human warmth. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God of welcome and homecoming, we pray for all our homes today. We pray for homes where love and companionship abound for homes that are fraught with tension and abuse, for homes that feel lonely, for homes where people struggle with mental and physical illness, with addiction, with poverty and hunger, for homes where people are grieving for a loved one, for homes that have been affected in whatever way by the consequences of the pandemic. Bless our homes, we pray, with your joy, your peace, your love. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And we come to the prayer that has been written for Refugee Sunday. Please join with me in the words on the screen. God, creator of all, for people who are displaced, may they find a safe refuge. For people who have lost control of their lives, May they know a sure foundation. For people who live in fear, may they be given a strong fortress. For people who are disillusioned, may they have hope in a future. Loving Father, in times of crisis, sorrow and uncertainty, we ask that you draw near. Amen. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Please use whatever version 
whatever language you feel most comfortable. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Come now to our final hymn. I know it's hard for those of you gathered not to be able to sing, but I've put a picture I hope you can see. You may or may not be too, of the sea. Um, did it not come up? That's very strange. Um, I'm hoping the sea will come up for you. And if not, if you love the sea, or just imagine a big vast expanse as you see, read the words of this hymn, uh, because it's talking about the vastness of God's love. There's a wideness in God's mercy. Sorry that my sea hasn't come up. in God's mercy like the whiteness of the sea there's a kindness in his justice which is more than liberty there is plentiful redemption in the blood that has been shed. There is joy for all the members in the sorrows of the head. There is grace enough for ours of new worlds as great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper home of bliss. For the love of God is broader than the measures of the mind and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind but we make his love to run by false limits of our own, and we magnify his straightness with a zeal he will not own. But make his love to turn by And that, my beautiful friends, was a lesson in worship without words.
Thank you. I'm so sorry, the um, PowerPoint version doesn't match with mine at home and I made a, uh, we've had quite a few problems before the service, so I just thought, oh, the PowerPoint's fine. And I've now learnt my lesson and, uh, but there we are. I thought Liz's Lars were very worshipful. And I, I must admit, I think we missed um, my very favorite, favorite words in that hymns, where for the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. Uh, but thank you both for singing it, and we all worshipped with our hearts, even if not with all the words. So thank you. A blessing, and then I will put up a prayer, which I'll ask you to join in with uh, from home and here. I invite you who are meeting here just to look around uh, a little moment each other. If you're at home, please look at whoever you're with or look on the screen if you're watching on Zoom. Give yourself a wave. <laughs> May God bless you and keep you. May she make her face to shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord look upon you with kindness. May you know every day of your life that where you fit in God's story is in the beautiful heart of God, which is most wonderfully kind. You always have a space in God's story. And may you help others find their space in God's story. Amen. A blessing. Uh, we kind of commit ourselves, as we say. In God's name, we will open our hearts. In God's name, we will face the challenges. In God's name, we will reach out and welcome in. In God's name, we will live for God. In God's name, we will support and bless each other. Amen. <laughs>